So you want to start taking the game seriously, but it's pretty demotivating to see your competition improve much faster than you. Well, let me tell you, it's probably because they know this simple equation and you don't. Take a look at this. Intensity times volume. So what does it mean? Let's define these terms for our situation. Intensity means your level of focus and effort during your training sessions. Volume means the amount of training sessions you take part in and how long they last. So the reason why your competition is improving faster than you is because their equation equals out to more than yours does. Let me show you what I mean. It means you're focused for most of the session, but sometimes you get distracted on your phone or try and troll the opponent with your fancy snake shots. Unfortunately, you won't improve as fast as the person who has the same schedule but comes 15 minutes earlier to training, practices their serves, then later trains at 100% intensity with no distractions. Your equation probably looks like this, and their equation probably looks like this. This means they're not only putting in more time into the game, but they're putting in more effort as well. So ultimately, it's no coincidence that they've improved faster than you. And while the difference may not look like much, in the coming years you'll be able to see a noticeable difference. A lot of people may have heard Kobe Bryant talk about the concept of putting in more volume and intensity into your training so you can improve faster than the other players. I think that the main reason that the state champions are state champions is because they train harder than us and for longer than us. So what do we have to do to improve more? Train harder for longer. So how do you actually train harder? Someone who trains hard is always tracking the ball meticulously, always making micro adjustments in footwork, always has a low center of gravity and has a very clear intention for every drill they do. They always ask questions if something or the other feels wrong in their technique or tactics. They always have positive and engaged body language and just by looking at their face, you can tell that they're on a mission. So now, how do you train for longer? A simple practice I used to take part in was coming 15 minutes early to training and practicing my serves. Just letting you know, if your coach sees you doing this, then it's going to make a very positive impression on them. And it will make it very clear that you're here to get better. And this will probably affect the priority they give you and the standard that they hold you to. The next thing, as obvious as it may sound, is to book more training sessions. If the cost of coaching is an issue, then you can attend coaching maybe just once a week. And for the other three to six days a week, you can book a call with your training partner or go to a social table tennis arrangement. Over there, you can work hard on the advice you were given and then report back next week with a better game and better technique. Those two options are usually much cheaper than a group or private session with a high level coach. Keep in mind, the more you have your coach around, the more beneficial training will be because you can always ask them questions and they can quickly spot if you're doing something wrong. If you have a table at home or even a robot, training a lot more becomes much, much easier. Assuming your coach doesn't teach you incorrect techniques or tactics, you will eventually surpass the person you have in mind. I can't really give you an estimate of how long it'll take because it really just depends on you. Now I wanna talk about a trap I fell for and a trap I sometimes still fall into. Let me ask you this. What happens when your coach pairs you up with someone that's not really on your level? So let me tell you about my horrible habit. My intensity would drop, I'd put less effort into moving my feet, stop making micro adjustments, play silly shots like snakes or chop blocks, and worst of all, have horrible droopy body language. While it can be demotivating if your training partner can't block the ball in one position, I like to think of it as a game or a challenge. When this happens, I somewhat delude myself into thinking that this is actually better for me, and if my partner is blocking inaccurately, it'll probably end up helping my footwork because I'll be forced to micro adjust. Training with an opponent that doesn't have the best blocking ability will give the drill an element of randomness to it which will end up just benefiting my footwork anyway. And if you think about it, it would probably also help you with your reaction time and shot selection. I think if you can think of it like this, then it will motivate you to keep up your intensity when you're training with a lower level training partner. A tactic you can use to push yourself even further is to let your coach know your intentions. What I'll do is for three to four sessions, bring a new level of intensity to your training. The coach will quickly realize this and notice something's off, then let them know your goals and that they can expect more from you in the future. I would also ask them to hold you to a higher standard and be hard on you when necessary. As they're also very, very passionate about the sport, they'll actually be delighted to hear this from Personally, I haven't really seen anyone big on YouTube table tennis talk about this topic and the way I've described it today. So I'm curious to see as to what the feedback will be on this video. But one thing I want to say is that if me from six months ago saw this video, I would definitely be a much better player today. I really hope you found value in this video because it was a pretty interesting video to record. Anyways, let me see what kind of videos you want to see next and I'll see you next time.